custom GPTs are a hot topic right now in AI, and they can be incredibly useful for your podcast. And today, Mark and I are going to show you how to build your very own custom GPT in less than 10 minutes. But for those of you who aren't quite sure what a custom GPT is yet, Mark, why don't you give us a breakdown of what is a custom GPT? So when we're talking about custom GPTs, think of ChatGPT as being specially trained to understand and generate content that is specifically relevant to your interests or your podcast or business needs. So for example, if you say run a podcasting business, a custom GPT for your business would be like having an assistant that's really knowledgeable about podcast trends or audio equipment or editing techniques or even giving tips on how to grow your audience. Let's dive in and show you how to make one. Okay, so I think the first thing that needs to be said in order to build your own custom GPT, you need to be on ChatGPT Plus. You need to be a pro member of ChatGPT, which is $20 a month. In both mine and Mark's opinion, it's very well worth it. Okay, and to get started building your own GPT, there's two ways you can actually do that. If you come down to your profile here, you can click my GPTs and it will take you into a whole list of OpenAI's custom GPTs as well as the option to create your own. Likewise, if you click the explore tab here, you're going to see that same exact screen, all of the custom GPTs that maybe you've built, ones that are provided by OpenAI, as well as the option to create your own GPT. So we're going to click that. Okay, so now that we are at the custom GPT builder, you can see here on the left side, we've got the actual interaction screen. This is where you can tell ChatGPT exactly how you want your custom GPT to be built. And then on the right side, you can test it with the preview screen so you can either easily start interacting with this custom GPT, see if it's working. And if it's not, you can go back on the left side and make some tweaks. So I think for our example today, Nick, let's create a custom GPT that helps a podcaster name their new podcast series. So now what it's doing is it's thinking about the request and, and putting together a skeleton of what this GPT might look like. Podcast name wizard sounds good to me. That's the suggestion it's given us. So we'll tell the GPT builder that we like it and we'll move on to the next question. So now what it's going to do is generate a profile picture for our GPT using the Dall E technology by OpenAI. And here we are with a wizard's hat with a lot of podcast symbols all around it. I like that one, Nick. Let's stick with that. Okay, so with the name and the profile picture figured out, ChatGPT is going to ask you some questions to help refine what that GPT is going to do. So it says, to ensure the GPT provides the best possible name for new podcasts, what kind of information should it prioritize or ask about the podcast? For example, should it focus on the podcast genre, target audience, tone, or specific themes? So for this example, we're going to say that we want it to focus on the genre and the target audience. And you can see as we're continuing to build out this GPT and provide it with more information, it is updating these little prompt starters on the side automatically for you. After we told it what to prioritize as far as podcast names are concerned, the next question it has is how do we want it to communicate? We want to give it a tone and a style. And Nick, I say we tell it to be casual and friendly as opposed to the formal and professional tone that it suggested. Okay, so now it says it's all set up and ready. And although, yes, I agree, it probably is, I have a feeling we may want to go in there and check things out and make sure it is going to do the exact job that we want it to. So the best way to do that is to hit the configure tab up at the top on the left side of the screen. And as you can see, this is where it breaks it all down for us. It shows us the name, the short description, and then the instruction section where we can feed it pretty much as much information as we want. Additionally, you can see the conversation starters, like we mentioned earlier, these little starting prompts. You can adjust or remove or change these as well. And then you also have the knowledge bank, which allows you to upload your own files. So you can provide more context that this specific GPT can reference when you're interacting with it. And don't forget, you can also add the other capabilities that ChatGPT 4 possesses, such as web browsing, Dolly image creation, and of course the code interpreter where it can read files and evaluate and analyze them. Okay, so now that we've seen the configure tab, let's take a look at the actual instructions themselves. So what I've noticed is that when you're interacting with the GPT builder, it likes to condense down the instructions. So you can give it a lot of information, yet it's still going to try to shrink it down to the smallest amount possible. But if we put the instructions here on this configure tab in this section, we can actually extend these instructions and get very specific with what we want the GPT to do. So we're going to actually add to the instructions that are here. And we're going to use the next gen podcaster five step process that we're going to paste right in here. Then we can hit close. 
and then hit save. Now, when you actually go to save your GPT, there's three ways that you can do that. You can save it so that only you are the one that is able to use it. You can save it so that you and anybody who has the link to the GPT can use it, or you can set it to public. And that would mean that your GPT could show up in the GPT store that is coming soon. So for the sake of this video, we're just going to set to only people with a link and hit confirm. And then we can click GPT and start using that GPT. And with our podcast name wizard GPT created, I wanted to quick jump in and let you know that Mark and I have been building custom GPTs for the community and next gen podcaster specifically to help help you with podcasting and content creation. Right now we have six custom GPTs exclusive for members over there. If you want to give them a try, just click the link that I put down in the description to join NextGen Podcaster. Okay, so should we show a quick demo, Mark? Yeah, let's do it. Let's create a podcast. We'll just make one up for the demo. Uh, let's make it about dog training. It's a podcast all about how to train your dog. Now you can see Nick is typing in here his prompt, or he could look through the conversation prompts and work from those. But in this case, we're very specific, so we're going to go with our own prompt to get started. And here now it's going through some of the five steps of our Next Gen Podcaster five-step process. And then it's giving some suggestions based on that five-step process and based on the topic of the show. So you can see here, it gave us 10 really nice suggestions for a podcast name. If it were me, I might lean toward Bark and Learn. I think it's very straightforward to the point. It's short and sweet. So obviously, we're just scratching the surface here with our custom GPT. And there are many more types that you could create. And you've seen we've created six others, and we would love to create more for you. So leave us a message in the comments. Let us know what kind of custom GPTs do you want to see?